So this is very important to the fly fishermen, especially when it comes to dry fly fishing, which we are going to talk about first. And so many of the flies that you fish with day in and day out are designed to look like mayflies. The problem is, is that in North America, there are over 600 species of mayflies. When it comes to color, all right, a lot of your mayflies, regardless of the time of the year or what mayfly it happens to be, of them are yellow, or they can be gray, or they can be ginger or amber like this one. Olive green, all right, I'm pretty much stressing body color here with grayish or amber wings. Brown with gray wings, very common. What happens is when there's a hatch is that your fish tend to become rather selective to a particular size, shape, and color that's prevalent. You get my drift so far? So for example, if this was the, the, the prevalent insect on the surface of the water or hatching, the fish may feed on it almost to the point of exclusion. If you want to catch the fish that you see feeding, the object is to select a fly that is somewhat similar in size, shape, and color to the natural. Very logical, all right? Now, when it comes to size, I have a couple of points I want to make. Most of the fish that you catch, particularly with dry flies, are going to be on flies tied on 12, 14, or 16. I consider those three hook or fly sizes to be the bread and butter of anybody's fly collection. Let's say you are on the stream. This is the prevalent insect that's hatching. You've caught one in your hand, okay? You see its size, shape, and color. You've identified it as a mayfly. Now you're going to open the lid and make the most logical choice that you can based on the collection of flies that you have with you. Are you ready? Here's what the textbook tells you to select. If you're expecting something concrete that looks like this, I'm not giving it to you, am I? Size, shape, and color. The size refers to the length of the insect from the head to the abdomen, okay? So the size isn't too bad. The color, close enough as far as I'm concerned. I'm not that big on color because I think size is more important than anything. But the shape is the hard thing to convey to the beginner. With your dry fly, just because of the way it's designed, it looks like from underneath, you know, suggest the profile of this thing bouncing along somewhat erratically over this fish's position. Okay, that's the reason that it works, is, is in most cases, anywhere you have pretty good current speed, your fish does not get a clear look at it. And certainly they do not see the insect the way you or I do when we look at this picture. They see a distorted view of this thing. By the way, the, with today's modern synthetics, uh, it's kind of neat. You can sit down to a fly tying vise and you can mold an exact replica of a mayfly with a hook sticking out of it that it, from 15 feet you can't tell the difference from the real McCoy. The um, problem I have with that t uh, type of creativity is I get a little bent out of shape when I cross the threshold from fly tying to model insect building. Okay? 